All right, welcoming you to Chair Yoga for the care of Wallenstroms. We're here on World Awareness Day to celebrate our global community by coming together through the practice of Chair Yoga. And this is such a wonderful community. I've gotten to know you over the years. And we've just recently been seeing a lot more participation from friends in the UK. Um, we have a lot of friends in Canada and we have a, a very regular practitioner from the Netherlands uh, and also Israel. So we're seeing a lot more countries represent and I'm really proud of that because Waldenstrom's isn't confined to the United States, although our IWMF offices are located here, the headquarters. So today, today's class, we're gonna celebrate our global community just by being together. So let's get started by noticing your feet on the earth. And I'm just gonna stamp my feet a little bit. And kind of feel that connection. And if you're seated on the floor, you can stamp your palms or feel that connection. If you're standing, you can stamp the feet. And then I'm just gonna rest my feet for a moment and notice my spine. So noticing my spine and maybe sort of giving it a little massage with my mind from the tailbone up to the crown of the head and back down, allowing the shoulders to relax, allowing the jaw to relax. And if you like, you could soften your gaze down or even close your eyes. So beginning our class with a little bit of breathing. Breathing is one of my favorite things to do more mindfully as a way to connect mind, body, and spirit. It's the thread that weaves these layers together. So I'm breathing in through the nose and out through the nose or mouth. Taking some easy breaths in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. Beginning to arrive in whatever state of being you're in, you're welcome here. You might be having a low energy day. You might be having a good energy day. Either way, we're noticing that without judgment. And we're asking our, ourselves, all the layers of ourselves, to arrive in this present moment with this breath, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose or mouth. And imagining all of my Waldenstrom's friends in their living rooms and dining rooms and offices and sun porches around the world. Breathing with me now, breathing in and breathing out. We are stronger together as a community. We are healing together as a community, breathing in and breathing out, feeling those tendrils of support connection. See if you could take one more breath, feeling this connection. And then we're going to take care of the eyes. So if you're wearing glasses, you could take your glasses off. I'm just gonna rub my hands together. So I'm coming into our class rather gently this morning. It's been kind of a roller coaster morning for me, finding out that my dad went to the ER last night and he's in the hospital and getting a whole bunch of emails from work. And I, I really need this today with you. And so I appreciate you um, bearing with my, me. And a yellow jacket just flew into my room too. So I'm just really rooting down and anchoring to you right now. Right now. I'm gonna take my palms, which have been infused with compassion, 
and cup them over my eyes. I'm just going to roll my eyes around a little bit within the safe space that I've created for myself. I'm rolling the eyes left and right, up and down. Just drinking in that nourishment of a little bit of darkness, a little bit of stillness. And then when you're ready, you can maybe give the face a little massage as you come out of that. Any areas in the face where you collect tension. You know your face better than I do. So that might be the jaw. I like to smooth out my brow, which is furrowing a lot lately. And knowing that the one thing I can count on is that whatever it is, it will change. So I'm just here to ride the waves of the present moment with you. And I'm okay with that. I like that. So you could take your glasses back on. And we're going to move the body head to toe. Little by little, a little bit of movement in a lot of places. Starting with the head and neck. So let's tilt that right ear towards the right shoulder. I'm going to take a breath and come back to center. Exhale, left ear, left shoulder. Inhale, center. Exhale to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. You could be doing this at a different pace, moving from side to side with your breath, moving in and out. And just observing, how does this feel for me today? And can I move my energy better through releasing tension and through strengthening and stretching muscles, connective tissue? That's kind of our goal with yoga is energy flow. One more on each side. And then I'll come back to center and I'm going to stretch both arms out. And I'm sitting up away from the back of my chair and I'm going to bring my arms back a little bit and I might try to arch my back and just lift my heart up a little bit like there is a, a hand on the back, on the, on the upper back, my heart on a platter. Breathing in. As I exhale, I'm going to bring my arms in front, interlace the fingers and pull the arms away from the body just a little bit. So I'm creating some space underneath the shoulder blades. Breathing in, opening, arching the back, heart on a platter, lifting. Here I am. And exhaling, interlacing, pulling the arms away from the body, creating that space in the upper back. You can take maybe one or two more of these if it feels good. And this last one, I might Instead of interlacing, I will give myself a hug. Right, so I'm going to notice which arm feels more comfortable on top. I'm going to tuck my chin. I'm going to take some breaths. And remember that I'm here to take care of myself in this moment. To take exquisite care of myself. And by doing so, I can be more present for others. All right, relaxing the arms down and bringing that right arm out to the right. So we're bringing the right arm out to the right. And I'm going to bring a lot of space between my fingers. If you have issues in the right shoulder, it doesn't have to be high up. You can lift the arm as high as feels good to you. So I've got my right arm out and I'm, in, I'm bringing lots of space between my fingertips, even tilting the fingers back towards my face a little bit. So it's a big wrist stretch. And then I'm going to make a fist around my thumb and drop the knuckles down. Okay, so inhaling, lifting, spreading fingers, exhaling, fist around the thumb, dropping the knuckles down, making any modifications for yourself as needed as we move through our practice today. 
And I might just do a fourth one. I really feel that energy flowing now as I bring my arm into my lap and I can notice the difference in the vitality between sides just from that one simple movement. So let's get things symmetrical here. I'm going to bring lots of space between my fingers and then knuckles down around the thumb. You got it, Ginger. Beautiful to see you today. And inhaling, opening, spreading the fingers wide. And Anne is here joining us from Canada. So grateful to see you. And we'll do a couple more at your own pace with the breath moving in and out. Right, if there are any other movements that feel natural to you here, you can always invite them in. And then I'll go ahead and just relax that arm down. I'll bring my right arm out to the right again. This time I'm gonna tilt my left ear over to my left shoulder and begin to circle the palm. Circling the palm, nice and easy. This whole space I'm creating for myself today is for my own self-care. So I'm just sending out little beacons of, well, maybe creating a boundary with my space here. So the arm comes down and behind the back or hand resting on the hip if that would feel easier. And I'm going to tilt my chin down, so I'm getting a big stretch. Looking down at that left shoulder, getting a big stretch in my upper right shoulder and neck. That area between the shoulder and neck, the traps, the trapezoids. Breathing in. Trapezius is what I meant to say. Breathing out. And coming back to center and doing all of that on the other side with that left arm out, tilting my right ear to the right, making those little self-care circles, moving ever downward. Breathing in, breathing out. And whenever it feels natural to do so, you could bring the arm behind the back Rest the hand on the hips, spin the chin down. I'm taking a couple of easy breaths here, letting go of effort. I don't have to work so hard all the time. Beautiful, and then we'll come back to center and I'm gonna bring my arms down at my sides. My feet are rooting down my seat is anchored down to my chair, or I'm standing, that's fine too. And I'm gonna, gosh, the sun really coming in here. Inhaling the arms out and up, and exhaling the hands to heart center. What is your why? Why did you come to this class today? Reaching up and grabbing that why. I am here to be connected to others. I'm here to take care of myself. Whatever your why is, just reaching up and grabbing it. Bringing it into your heart center. As we move the lymph fluid, get the blood moving, making any modifications so this feels comfortable to you. It doesn't have to be a whole arm movement. It could be a small arm movement. But maybe it's out to the sides and to center. Good. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more. Beautiful. And I'll interlace my fingers and push my palms away, juice up my fingers. And then I'll release my arms and grab onto my chair somewhere behind me, nice and low so my arms are straight. And I'm going to lift my heart and squeeze my shoulder blades together. 
Right, so I'm doing a, a version of our cobra pose with my back being arched. And if I feel safe doing so, I can lift my chin. And you know, if I have neck issues, I'm gonna avoid that. Squeezing the shoulder blades, breathing into all of that space in the chest. And then releasing and letting the arms go, letting the arms dangle and swing. And we can practice another one of those cobra poses. So arms coming back, holding on to something. It could be just a very subtle arching of the back. And maybe I can imagine I'm a cobra coming up out of a basket, basking in the warm sun, like feeling that energy of the sun entering my chest. and then releasing the arms and swinging them. And I might as well give myself another hug while I'm here. Opposite arm on top, if you can remember which. And tucking the chin and taking a couple breaths here. And then we'll move to some whole body movement. So I'm gonna take a sip of water and move into my chair that's a little farther away. Feel free to take a sip of water, whatever you have going on. I'm at the edge of my chair and I'm just going to start to march in place, right? You could do this. If you have a lot of energy to release today, you could stand up and do this standing. It's all totally up to you. This is your practice. And what feels good to you is the priority. Some of us might be having a low energy day and need to kind of manage our energetic capacity. Walking in place, opposite arm, opposite leg. My mind is sort of at my core, right? That's the thing that's holding me up. Five, four, three, two, one. Taking a wider stance here, taking a wider stance. You could do this seated or standing. I'm gonna bring my right arm to my right rib cage and lean over to the left. So right arm, right rib cage. You've got it. And I'm going to breathe into my right rib cage and see if I could lift it with my hand. So I'm feeling all of the space in my right rib cage as I breathe. And then I'm coming back to center. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Left hand, left rib cage, lean to the right. So there's a little side bend. And I'm breathing into that left rib cage, seeing if I could lift it with my hand. It might be a very, very subtle little movement and that's fine. So you could keep doing it like that, right? Or you might wanna lift that right arm up and over to whatever degree feels safe. So there's some options. Some options for you to explore side bending, which is something we should be doing for our spines every day. It's not something that we typically do throughout the course of our daily routine. What movement, what motion am I ever doing this? You know, maybe I'm reaching up for something on a shelf in a weird way. I don't know, I can't think of it. Um, and so we wanna keep these muscles between the ribs supple to help aid in respiration. One more on each side. Beautiful. You got it. And then I'm gonna walk my feet back and I'm going to come to stand. So this is an option. If you would prefer to stay seated, you can stay seated. I'm gonna to come to stand. It's a lot of you are already standing, so I thought I would join you. But if you need to take care of yourself and stay seated, I will do my best to give you um, modifications to do on your own. So in either case, we're gonna be noticing our feet, the foundation. I could even take a look down and thank my feet. Thank you for carrying me for all these years. And it always blows my mind to think about a body part. Like I've had that big toe for 53 years. 
that big toe has just been, you know, working for me all this time. So I'm going to send it a little love. I'm going to lift all the toes that will lift. See if I could spread them as wide as possible and dig them back down. Right? Maybe the toes answer me, maybe they don't. So I'm trying to lift and spread my toes and dig them back down. Thank you for trying toes, lifting, spreading and digging. Noticing I have less dexterity on my um, left side. I'm right hand dominant. Maybe one more. Good. And then I'm going to come up onto my tiptoes. If I'm seated, I could just lift my heels, come back down. Maybe I'll lift my toes, right? I'm holding onto my chair, lifting my heels and then lifting my toes. It was a little different from what we normally do. We normally just come up onto our tiptoes, but see if you can roll back a little bit and lift your toes. If that doesn't feel safe to you, feel free to just do the calf raises or tiptoe floats. Beautiful. A way to bring some strength and dexterity into an area that can sometimes present with peripheral neuropathy, the toes, the lower limbs. So this is an exercise our beautiful exercise physiologist Nancy Campbell has given to us to do every day if we're um, among the group that experiences PN in the lower limbs. How many should you do? I don't know. I think about 10 is good. And I'm working on letting go of the chair. And I, maybe I'm not going to roll back on my heels this time. I'm just going to come up. And I might do one more. That's good. All right. And then I'm coming back to my walking in place. Taking a big breath in, feeling that energy flowing. All right, and then we're taking that wide stance again. Wide stance, I'm gonna circle my hips. If I'm seated, I'll do a torso circle. So my whole torso will be circling. In my standing version of this, it's like I have a hula hoop that will never fall. And I am exploring the parameters and the boundaries and the limits of this hula hoop. How far does it go? How wide? I can move the other direction. Any areas where you feel resistance, And uh, in our Tai Chi class the other day, Rami had us doing this for a total of three minutes, this one thing. And it was our very first exercise, a great way to warm up and get the energy moving. So if you haven't checked out our Tai Chi class yet, um, all of the recordings are on our YouTube channel. All right, I'm gonna bring my arms out to the sides like a cactus. I still have this nice wide stance. Beautiful. Let's reach up and to the left with both arms and come back down into the cactus. I'm breathing in, reaching up with one or both arms and coming back down. Right, so it's a side bend and coming back to that strong cactus. You got it. Reaching up, side bending, coming back to center. One more on each side. See how this feels for you. Modify it, change it, make it yours. Beautiful. And I'll bring my arms out to the sides at whatever height feels good to me. And I'm just going to twist my torso loosely from side to side. So I'm rooting down through both feet and I'm twisting my torso from side to side. 
if that's something that is available to me today. And if it isn't, I'll do something else. All right. Beautiful. Now I'm going to take my fists and bring them to my lower back and give my lower back a little massage up and down the outside of the spine. I'm going to squeeze my elbows together, lift my heart, and I might push my hips forward a little bit. If I'm seated, I'll do the cobra like we did before. If you feel comfortable lifting the chin, that's available to you as well. Elbows pulling towards each other, chest is opening. If you get dizzy easily, keep your chin level with the earth. And then come back up nice and slow. All right, let's move through a couple classical yoga shapes. Warrior one, with that right foot forward and the left foot back. And I've got a nice wide base here. So my right foot can walk to the right a little bit. And I'm gonna be bending into my right knee and keeping my torso upright. Squeezing that left glute muscle and this might be where I stay with maybe one hand on the chair, one hand on the heart. That's an option. Right? Or I could lift my left arm, maybe up and over. That's another option. Or I could keep my hands at heart center and find a stable warrior one with that right knee bending. That right knee is bent. If that feels safe for you. Squeezing the left glute muscle, big breath in. Beautiful. Coming out of it nice and slow, I'm going to shorten my stance here. So my right foot is still forward. My legs are straight and I'm gonna take a bow and slowly fold forward without rounding my spine and maybe bring my forearms onto the back of my chair. My chin is tucked, so I'm trying to protect my neck. And I'm taking some breaths here. If I don't feel any stretch at all in the back of that right leg, I might come down a little farther, but I'm not gonna push myself through discomfort or pain. So I'm just finding what feels best to me here, breathing in, breathing out. The head is a natural extension of the spine, so if you find that you're really like tucking your chin or like uh, the head is bobbling down, bring some energy into the back of that neck. Tuck the chin. And then we'll come up nice and slow. I'm going to bring some weight into my right foot. And I might kick up that left leg a couple times. Just juice up that left hip. You got it. Maybe walking in place if you're seated. Right? Or you want to do that instead of this. Okay. Switching sides. I'm going to step my left foot forward. Bring my right foot back at an angle. Nice wide stance. So I'm walking my left foot to the left. And I'm bending into my left knee. And let's feel the back leg strong including the right glute muscle. The torso's upright and I'm doing whatever feels best. Maybe I'm circling my right arm up and over. Maybe I have my hands at heart center. Just exploring what feels good to me, right? Sitting if I need to sit, modifying this in any way I need to. You got it, Janet. Seeing the strength in your legs there. Finding my breath. One more breath, warrior one. You got it, Joanne, very nice. Posture's looking really good. And then we'll come up out of this and we'll shorten our stances. So I've got my left foot forward, my, my, both my legs are straight and with a nice flat back, I'm taking a bow, tucking my chin and finding that stretch for the back of my left leg.
Taking my hands to the chair, the seat, if that feels good, if I need to have a little farther to travel, I'm not going to push through discomfort or pain here. Finding what works for me. And then we'll slowly make our way up and do a few little kicks with the right leg. Weight is in the left foot. I'm holding onto my chair, juicing up that right hip, or walking in place, or whatever feels good to you. And then we'll take one more standing pose before we do some stretches in a seated posture. So let's come to stand and challenge our balance. Bearing in mind that balance um, is an ever-changing thing, you might have, you know, a sense of balance that comes and goes. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a little bendy bounce. So my knees are going to have like a little micro bend. I'm going to bring my weight over into my right leg and pick up my left heel. And I'm just going to hug that leg in and sort of zip up my core. So I'm just standing on one leg, and if I'm not standing for this, I'm visualizing doing this in my mind's eye. Let yourself wobble. Let yourself fall out of it. This is where we see the gains. If you're finding this really easy today, you can close your eyes and work on that inner sense of balance without the use of vision, which is about 14,000 times harder without vision. So um, give that a whirl. And then we'll come out of it. We'll kick out that right leg. Very nice, guys. And that one, it's an area where we tend to judge ourselves, so please be mindful that there is not one right, perfect way of doing this. I'm going to bring the weight into the left leg, pick up the right heel, zip it up, work on finding my edge today. Where's my edge? What do I have to do to fall out of it? I want to purposefully and safely approach that edge with kindness, with compassion, and when I fall out of it, maybe I have to close my eyes to fall out of it, I say to myself, oh, hello there, old friend. There you are. It's so nice to see you. Rather than that negative self-talk we can sometimes have. So one minute per side per day, standing on one leg, that is our goal. If for those of us who really want to work on improving our balance, and that will help us avoid falls and stay independent longer. Of course, you're going to modify that if you have issues um, that prevent you from holding it that long. So coming to sit, taking a little sip of water on the way. Maybe you want to do a downward facing dog on the chair before you come to sit or any other stretches along the way. I'm going to come to sit nice and slow. I'm going to cross that right ankle over my left knee to whatever degree feels possible and safe for me. And I'm just going to take a little time to massage or tap the bottom of the right foot. Massage is one of those integrative offerings that can really help us manage chronic illness, pain, peripheral neuropathy. It's not just something that is there for a luxurious self-care treat, right? It is something that can really help. So let's come to our stretch. I'm going to take my hands onto my shin or wherever feels good, and I might move my heart forward, right? If I'm laying on the floor, I might hug my leg in towards the chest. And we did this in our gentle yoga class. A lot of you were there on the mat, lying on the back doing this. Same exact shape, just different orientation in space. Relax the shoulders, find your breath. So 
Good. Just sitting up tall. We'll cross the knee over. Coming into our twist now. Maybe you bring that foot down onto the earth if you're, if you're lying down. And we're going to nestle the right knee on top of the left. Or whatever feels good. And I'm going to start to twist to the right using my own core muscles. Right? So I'm twisting my torso to the right and my hands are resting wherever feels good to me to support this twist. Peeking over that right shoulder with a nice tall spine, big breath in and breath out. And slowly making our way back to center. Switching sides. We've got the, we're sitting in our chairs, we've got the left ankle over the right knee. To whatever degree feels possible for you, you could modify this. And I'm taking a moment to massage the left foot or shin, whatever is available. All right, so if you're just coming in, we're sort of at the tail end of our practice today. And we're going to finish up with a meditation in a moment, so feel free to get comfy for that. I'm going to grab onto my shin, reach my heart forward, stretching the outside of my left hip. That's where I feel it. You might feel it in a different place. I'm softening here a little bit, softening my shoulders, my jaw. Still finding my breath. Maybe one more breath. Good. Sit tall. Cross that leg over. So we're coming into our twist. I'm going to twist to the left. I'm not in any hurry to get anywhere. There is no end destination with any of my poses. I'm always just on a journey within the shape to understand where my breath can travel. where I can soften and let go, and where I can keep effort. Relaxing back to center and maybe taking one more big stretch in any way that would feel good. Maybe a part of the body you feel like we didn't get enough of today. And I'm going to come over here to the singing bowls and give you a little calming sound therapy. So if you would like, you can come to sit or rest in any way that would feel good. Some of you might feel comfortable getting into a more uh, reclined pose. You might have an easy chair nearby that you would like to sit on, or you could stay exactly where you are. just allowing ourselves a few moments longer to integrate all the poses we just did and to perhaps witness that we are more than physical containers we are more than our bodies feeling the breath flowing in and out vitality coursing through the body and maybe even going outside the borders of your physical container the energetic body might feel bigger than the physical body to move my mind to my heart center as we practice this short meditation moving my mind to the heart center and as I breathe in that place in my heart center is expanding and as I breathe out I can imagine a flame 
an almond-sized flame right at the center of my heart space that grows a little bit brighter. We're breathing in and radiating that warmth out. Breathing out and the flame at the heart center grows brighter. Whichever parts of your body are touching the earth, you can allow them to soften a little bit. Almost as if you could merge with the earth itself and send down exploratory tendrils and roots into the earth that can push deeper and wider as we seek connection, healing with each other, with our Waldenstrom's community. May all beings everywhere be free from suffering and may our thoughts words and actions in some way contribute to that freedom from suffering. And when I say all beings, may all beings, including myself, be free from suffering. And may my thoughts, words, and actions in some way contribute to my own relief of suffering. just begin to come out of our short meditation by taking a breath in, sighing it out the mouth. Bringing the hands to heart center if it's in your practice. Feeling the support of this global community on World Awareness Day. It's truly an honor to be with you. So I'll close our class today with one Om and three Shantis. And the word Shanti means peace in Sanskrit. And the, the first Shanti can be for ourselves. The second Shanti can be for everybody in this space today, sharing this space, whether it's on the recording or live. And then the third Shanti can go out as far and as wide as your energy will carry it. So we're breathing in and we're doing one Om and three Shantis, just listening or joining in if you like. Om Shanti 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 And thanking you so much for your practice today, my friends. Namaste.